The following is a production of the University of Minnesota, driven to discover. Hi, this is David Arendale, your host for PAL Groups. Thanks for joining us for this episode. It features an interview with Melissa, who is a student here at the University of Minnesota. She serves as a PAL facilitator in a general chemistry course. Two things to watch for in terms of the interview. One of them is, is talking about how she uses exam bingo to help prepare students. The other one is, is the way that she creatively involves students in the creation of the worksheets and also for helping to conduct the sessions. So let's go ahead and listen to the interview. Well, hi, this is David. We're here uh, visiting with Melissa. Melissa, tell me just a little bit about yourself and why you got involved as a facilitator. I am a senior at the university. I'm studying biochemistry with plans to go to medical school. I also work as a tutor through the Smart Consultants, and this is just doing PAL as another way to incorporate you know, the tutoring aspect, but on a grander scale. Well, tell me a little bit about the class that you're uh, supporting and why does that material seem to be more challenging for students? I am helping out with a general chemistry class. It's mainly first years that are in the class and it seems to be more challenging because a lot of the information builds on top of itself. So chapter two builds on chapter one, chapter nine on chapter eight. You miss out on a section of the material. That's not the last time you're going to see it. And with first year students, sometimes they don't realize that. What are your favorite one or two activities that you do during your PAL sessions that seem to be really effective with helping students to better learn the material and also develop their skills? One of the activities that we do a lot is we play bingo for review. Because we have a larger class size, it works well because we'll get the students either in teams or individually, but it builds a competitive nature and they actually want to try and they actually prepare and study ahead of time for the material compared to normal sessions where we'll just like do a worksheet or go over problems. So the bingo is definitely a popular activity. And then also when we're going over worksheets lately, I've had them prepare a problem, but then they're not allowed to write that answer on the board. The rest of the class has to think about how to do it and then tell them what to write. So even though they know the answer, they have to help or guide the rest of the class in that direction. Wow. where did you get that idea from? One of the other facilitators had used it in a previous class that she's taught. So she recommended it and it seems to work well. Well, thanks for those two suggestions. And the last question really kind of gets us to focus on you. And that is, what do you think you're developing personally or professionally out of serving as a PAL facilitator? I think I've really developed like my small group management skills, especially having like an interactive small group compared to just like lecturing to a classroom, it's completely different than having, you know, the students interacting with you um, because you can't always go by what you plan to do. You have to go with the flow. So that's probably the biggest skill I've taken from it. And also just to be able to teach a class and help other people, you have to know the subject matter on a, a much greater scale. So it also helped me to review my chemistry and get those general concepts that are the backbone to a lot of the rest of my education. Well, thanks for being able to share with us today. Thanks. Well, thanks for listening to this episode. More information about PAL is available at the website palgroups.org, P-A-L-G-R-O-U-P-S dot O-R-G. Join us next time for another interview about peer-assisted learning. Until then, take good care and good listening.